My name is uh, Laurie Bayet. I'm a postdoc at the University of Rochester and Boston Children's Hospital, uh, working on developmental cognitive neuroscience. My name is Alon, uh, and I am studying currently at Oxford. I'm doing my PhD um, there with Professor Tim Behrens, um, and I'm currently working um, on computational cognitive neuroscience. Alon and I <laughs> are um, trying to uh, use a paper by Tomezo Poggio and co-authors on a specific way to achieve invariant recognition in computer vision or other like uh, algorithm. So we're basically trying to implement this in a simpler, simpler case and then moving on to um, face recognition in under rotations. The idea is that um, that most of the variants in um, in computer vision, when 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 an algorithm tries to discover what is in the image, uh, is held in very few um, manipulation, like a translation, which is a shifting the image across the across the field, or rotations, or scaling. Tommy so Poggio has a cool idea of how to create this signature that Laurie just told about, which is invariant to these things and might reduce the sample complexity, so the, how many examples you need to learn. For the simple case, we just used an existing data set of digits. For the face data set, uh, we tried to find a suitable data set online, but we ended up just taking videos of people using materials provided by the summer school. So taking videos of people rotating their heads like this slowly. Yeah, it was fine. Um, or moving around a little bit. We have now a complete data set of the heads of people uh, from different <laughs> angles. We want to provide um, the algorithm with a hopefully limited number of um, raw frames from people rotating their heads like this. Those um, templates, so to speak, and act then as like a, um, a kernel, so to speak, to be able then to recognize unseen people under various angles so that um, whatever your person is showing this profile or this profile, you would still be able to recognize it with the same level of accuracy that as if they were front of, um, presenting a frontal face. Uh, the purpose of doing this project would be um, like in the long run, uh, or what this eye theory as Tommy Poggio calls it will be in the long run, would be to reduce the number of examples that an algorithm, uh, like for example, deep neural nets, the, num the number of examples they need to see in order to learn um, their weight in order to, le to, to, to learn how to classify objects or retrieve, uh, how to cl classify images or retrieve images. We haven't done, started the face part, we only started the, the digits part, which worked, so we are... Yeah, it's working basically, we we'll hope see. it will also work in the endlessly more complex <laughs> <laughs> domain of faces, yeah, you know. but... Um, yeah, we're... Okay. Okay. Reasonably okay. optimistic. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, approached the project from pretty much very different angles, but still ended up having common interests, which I guess is kind of the mm. hallmark of this summer school too. Like Alan has said, it, we're interested in the uh, engineering problem, so to speak. So like, how can we achieve this with machines? And I came from the. I approached the project from. A developmental perspective. So, given that the current algorithms manage to do invariant face recognition based on, uh, you know, a large, fairly large number of exemplars, how come that infants can achieve this in a few months, um, based on, you know, a lot of experience, but not that much, uh, mostly looking at their parents, um, caregivers, and a few other exemplars, but not that, not like. 3,000 people uh, from all possible angles. So this is why I was very interested in this theory and um, trying to implement this manually has been pretty cool so far.